It's 11.16, it's Friday, and that means one thing. It means there are a load of brand new movies that come out today. Some are on streaming, some are in the cinema, some are on digital. But our movie critic, Van Connor, gets to see all these movies way before we do, which is why he comes onto the show just for a little chat every Friday to talk about the ones that we should maybe be watching or be avoiding. Hello, Van Connor. Welcome back to the show. A pleasure as always, Mr. Ball. Things are good on your end, I hope. All good this end, and we've got uh, some decent, or supposedly decent movies that are out this week. So, shall we yeah. start with Salem's Lot? We're going to talk about Time Stalker in a minute, the new Nick Frost one. I say it's, it's not his movie, but he's in it. Um, so, <laughs> Salem's Lot. This is, um, wow, it's a bit creepy, this one. Yeah, so this is a new adaptation of the uh, novel of the same name by Stephen King that sees uh, a writer, uh, played by Lewis Pullman, returning to his hometown of Jerusalem's Lot, hence the title Salem's Lot, because Sean, yeah, um, to research for a book, uh, finds himself meeting a young woman and gets drawn into this fight to save the the residents of the town from a vampire who is trying to convert them into his own personal army. Um, I've got a clip for you. Have a listen. This is the new adaptation of Salem's Law. <laughs> I've always written stories about things that are so terrible. You'll run away until your brain won't remember. So why did you come back? I'm here for research. What exactly though are you researching? I can see you lying back have you noticed anything out of the ordinary in the lot recently? I mean, the vampire in this, I have to say, is horrifying, Van. Horrifying. So no, it's a good design, I know. Uh, the problem is that the rest of the film feels so perfunctory, it really feels, especially after things like like 30 Days of Night has kind of proven to be the definitive one of these, I think, now. Uh, there's things in there that will uh, take you back to the Lost Boys. It, it's very much a, a mishmash, greatest hits go-around of much better movies. But you will come away from it thinking, good Lord, that wasn't that memorable. However, you will think, yes, but I do fancy revisiting the Lost Boys or 30 Days of Night. So there is that to it. I mean, it's... Uh, written and directed by Gary Daubman, uh, who did the uh, did, wrote a bunch of the Conjuring uh, movies, the Conjuring series, like the spin-offs and things, and then made his directorial debut with Annabelle Comes Home, which I think is the third one of those. Um, and it's, it's decently directed, it's just not particularly imaginatively written, and I think that's more to do with the fact that, you know, it, it's trading on the Stephen King name, it's an old story, but, you know, we've seen better versions of this done since. Sounds like it has a pretty decent soundtrack to it as well, is that right? Or was that just a random song that was in there? That song is actually in the movie a lot. That's kind of its recurrent theme song. Like, its, it's recurrent motif is to use that song throughout uh, Sundown. I forget who performs that now. Uh, but uh, it's got, it's got like, fun, you know, Stephen Kingian sort of, like, 1970s retro mm. love pumping through it, has to be said. But it's just not as memorable, for instance, as the 2019 uh, Pet Cemetery adaptation. And even that was kind of throwaway. Well, I do love a good Stephen King, so if you want to uh, check out Salem's Lot, you can this weekend. It's on at George Street and View Cinemas in Oxford, View Bista, Cineworld Bista and The Light in Banbury as well. Okay, then, let's move on to Time Stalker. Um, As I mentioned, I'm a bit of a Nick Frost fan. He happens to be in this, but that's pretty much all I know. It's, um, it's, uh, what would you class it as? I mean, I guess, is it, is it a, a fantasy, romance, comedy? Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit, a bit of everything. Really. <laughs> so it's a time-spanning, multi, mul- time-spanning, multi-generational romantic comedy, for lack of better terms. But not a rom, not a rom-com romantic comedy. Sort of a romantic satire comedy that lampoons convention. So it's it's written and directed by and stars Alice Lowe. Alice Lowe is Agnes, who, who we initially meet in, I think, the sixteenth, the sixteenth or seventeenth century, and she's a, you know, she's a young woman who you know meets the wrong guy that she can't be with and dies in the process of getting with him, and it's all done in this anachronistic, sort of slapsticky way where she sort of injects modern humour into, you know, 
ye olde dialect. Okay? There's anachronistic humour in there. Um, she then, after dying in, in, in the first time we meet her, then we, we follow her a century later, where she has been reborn. Her soul is reborn into another body, and she repeats effectively the same story. And this keeps happening throughout the ages, and she retains more memory every time of her past lives, and becomes determined to be with this man that she sees as her soulmate. You've also then got Nick Frost, who is the man that she sort of doomed to be with in every life. So in ye olden times, he's the wealthy landowner that she gets married off to. In modern times, he's the abusive boyfriend, things like that. And it's all done, as I say, through this anachronistic, modern-day, contemporary rom-com prism. So I've got a clip for you. This is Alice Lowe in Time Stalker. What ails thee, mistress? It is hard to explain to a servant. But I shall try, though it be fruitless. Oh, don't bother yourself, mistress. I must clean the grate. I have everything I have ever wanted. Fine teeth. My books. A handsome house. A hale and hearty husband who is oft absent. And any trinket my heart desires, but I cannot help but seem to crave for something I have lost. Oh, is it your mistress? I found it under the bed. See, I I love it when they take you by surprise with some sort of comedy one-liners mm. like that. Has it got lots of that in it? There is a lot of that to it. It's it's bags of fun. I don't think it's going to be for everyone. Like I, I, I say it's bags of fun, but I do find things like uh, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place and Inside Number Nine uh, quite funny. And this belongs very much in that camp. If you're someone that, for instance, likes the Mighty Boosh, uh, you might get on with this as well. I mean, I've been a fan of Alice Lowe since, uh, I mean, since Sightseers, really, which is about 10 or 12 years ago now. And since then, she made her directorial debut, I think, with Prevenge, which was a really fun uh, horror comedy about an expected mother. And she was a lot of fun in there. Um, she's equally fun here. She's, she's always good value for money as Alice Lowe because there is this very distinct, unique comedic frequency on which she operates that is very distinctly her. But at the same time, it's, it's wonderfully dry and delivers some absolutely macabre sensibilities really well. Um, I think she's fantastic here. Like I say, this is not going to be a Saturday night crowd pleaser, but I think if you are someone that enjoys your alt comedy, do definitely check out Time Stalker. It's really silly. It's kind of It's kind of like Darren Aronofsky's The Fountain. By, by way of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, if you can imagine that. Well, I've seen the trailer, and actually, um, for something sort of quite alternative, I-, I was quite interested in this, and I wouldn't mind seeing it. And if you're the same, you can. Time Stalker is out from today, uh, and you can see it at the Phoenix Picture House in Oxford if you want to go and check out uh, Time Stalker. So, Van, what have we got to look forward to next week? Any biggies on the horizon? Well, you know me, I'll always find something to cover next week on the horizon, but I believe we will finally be talking about Terrifier 3 next week. Oh, yes. I know a lot of people have been waiting Killer for that. Killer clowns abound. Yes. Well, of course, time oh, of year, and there's man. a new Kevin Smith movie. There's a new Kevin Smith movie next week as well. We've got the 4.30 movie uh, to cover next week. You know me, I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan, so that has to be done. Well, we'll see what you think of those on Friday next week, same time. For now, Van, thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend, and uh, we'll catch you on Friday next week. Enjoy your movies. Till next time, good sir. Thank you, Van. Right then, it's 11.25 on BBC Radio Oxford.